If you've ever bought a pistol that was a new model, you know, something that's like a new release, you know how frustrating it can be to find a holster for it. A lot of times it takes a while for companies to get caught up and start making holsters for new guns when they come out. Then there's those guns that nobody seems to make holsters for because they're not as like popular as other guns. The IWI Masada, that's a great example. It's a good gun, but it's not a Glock and it's not a SIG. And when it first came out, not a lot of people were making holsters for it. In instances like that, a lot of holster companies will just go ahead and bypass making a holster for it because the money is in the more popular weapons. That's where the new universal holsters for McKinetech come in handy. The MTA and the MDZ. These things are great. They are newly released. Now I know, the idea of a universal holster, it's not exactly like a new idea. These holsters though, they really are worth a look. At this point, there are hundreds of companies out there making holsters, and yes, there's probably a half a dozen or so that are making universal style holsters. Some of these companies are selling overly bulky, just basic ass holsters with no options for anywhere between $120 to $150. That is not how McKinetech does it. Both the inside the waistband and outside the waistband universal holsters, they both cost $75. So $75 for these holsters. And it doesn't matter what type of Kydex you go for. A lot of other companies, um, they upcharge you for premium Kydex. Uh, so you have one price for a standard black Kydex. Or, you know, if you want like the, I don't know, blue plaid, that would be an extra $15 through a lot of companies. Not with McKinetech. If you want the gray basket weave, it's the same price as a standard black Kydex. If you want a high sweat guard, a low sweat guard, fancy Kydex, regular Kydex, it doesn't matter. The holster is the same price. Now, later on, who knows, that $75 price may go up. It is Biden's America. You never know what's going to happen with inflation. But as of today, that's the price no matter what options you choose. Also, it's even a little bit less if you use 360TS as your discount during checkout. No, I don't get a commission from that, but when you use that discount, it does let McKinetech know where sales are coming from so that when they do come out with new products, they know where to send them to for testing and evaluation. Hell, even if McKinetech didn't send me these holsters, I would have bought them anyways. At this price, you'd be crazy not to. First off, let's talk about how universal holsters work. If you have a Surefire X300, or a Streamlight TLR-1, or just recently there was an option added for the TLR-7A. If you're using any of those three lights, you're set, you're good to go. Just go ahead and order the one that is specific for the light that you're using. Universal holsters, they index to the light instead of the gun. They get their retention at the light instead of the trigger guard. The rest of the holster shape where the gun is, well, that area is slightly oversized, and somewhat generic shaped to be able to accommodate a variety of different size and shape pistols. There are definitely some positives and negatives when it comes to a universal holster, but first let's talk about compatibility. As soon as these holsters showed up, I started testing them with as many guns as I possibly could. The first one on my list was the Metal Frame MNP 2.0 Competitor. Now the frame on this gun, it is slightly different from the polymer version, so holsters can be kind of hit and miss for it. Also, with it being a longer slide, it can be kind of problematic finding one that's gonna accommodate such a long slide and barrel. I put the TLR1 onto the competitor, and it fits, no problem. The open end of the holster gives enough room for the slide to come through while still being able to remain stable uh, and secure inside of the holster. While we're talking about M&Ps, we might as well talk about two other M&Ps in my collection. Right here, I've got the standard four inch M&P 2.0. Uh, this one, it fits exactly the same in this holster as the competitor. Now we can swap the light over to the 10 millimeter M&P. Now this one, it is a little bit thicker than the nine millimeter, so it can be pretty problematic as far as getting it into a holster. Now, some of the cheaper holsters, it's not that big of a headache, but the more definition that a holster has, the less it's going to fit the thicker, blockier 
uh, slide on the 10 millimeter, but TLR1 on there, and again, it's gonna go ahead and work out just fine. In this MTA holster, it really feels like it was made for it. Here's a fun one, HK VP9. I dug this thing out of the darkest corner of my gun safe where it lives. I went ahead and put the TLR1 on there, and as you can see, that sits in there just fine. The MTA doesn't interfere with the paddle mag releases on this gun at all. Um, I played around with it a little bit and I don't see any issues coming in the future from carrying the VP9 in this universal holster. Those mag releases should be just perfectly fine. Springfield, Echelon, perfect fit. It's almost like it was made for it. As a side note, I did carry this as my daily carry setup for right about two weeks. Uh, swapped out of that and into something else for testing purposes. I could very easily stick with this as my full-time daily carry rig uh, without really having any issues. It felt a little weird at first going from uh, the Hellcat Pro over to this, just size and weight wise. Um, but it does ride really well and I like it. All right, let's see, what else? Uh, I had a Canik here recently in my office. I think that was a SFX TP9 or something. Not my gun, a friend brought it over and I was taking a look at it, so I figured I might as well test it in uh, the Universal holster. It worked just fine. I tried the Polymer 80, uh, the PSA Dagger, the PSA Rock, uh, multiple guns so far. I've tried basically every gun uh, that's come in and out of my office and they've all almost all worked really well. I think it would be faster and more efficient to talk about the guns that were more problematic than the guns that weren't. Some of those guns were double stacked 1911 or 2011 pistols. I got a decent fit with my 4.15 inch tactical 4.0. Now I did have to run it in and out of the holster a few times to get enough clearance the rail on the bottom and just the size and bulkiness of the slide didn't really like the inner dimensions of the holster. Now, after running it in and out a few times, it did pull a little bit of excess plastic from the inside of the holster, and now it, it works just fine. Um, I would prefer just a little bit more clearance down here for my finger and maybe a little bit more uh, for the tall sights that are on this gun, but all in all, not really complaining. It's not really surprising that there was some, I don't know, adjustment that needed to be made in order for this thing to work smoothly with the staccato. Um, you know, it's all par for the course with 2011s. There is nothing easy when you live that staccato life. There just isn't. So just remember, if you're using a staccato, you know, it may take a little bit of a break-in period with the holster before it works the way that you would expect it to work. Now, one of the guns that I didn't really love the way that it fit is this one here. This is my Rock Island Double Stack uh, 1911. This one here, this is a nine millimeter. And again, this is very similar in shape to the 2011, to the Staccato. It is blocky, it is square. Um, and comparing the size of the slide to the size of the hole in the holster, I can actually see a couple of spots uh, down here in the tunnel where it's, it's wore away a little bit of material so it'll actually fit through there now. But at first it didn't really want to go. It's kind of a tight fit. This gun has an extremely long slide and barrel configuration and just the size, the size is the main thing. There is a little bit of a gap here around the outside for uh, the slide to come through, which is, you know, it works, but it, this one required quite a bit more like break in to be able to actually go through there. And again, just the design of the firearm itself, I'm not left with a lot of room to be able to, to really grab it the way that I would like to, uh, to be able to draw it from the holster. Let's be honest though, if you're trying to carry this gun right here inside the waistband, uh, nothing in life is gonna be easy. Really, if you're looking to carry this, I would, I would just tell you not to 
universal holster or one that's made for it, it's probably just, it's not gonna be fun. It will work with this MTA, just, you know, it's heavy, it's bulky, it's hard to get a good hold of uh, when it's concealed inside the waistband. All right, so speaking of bulk, uh, I, I don't wanna make this some sort of like comparison thing because I really don't like doing those type of videos. Something that I've noticed with universal type holsters though is that they tend to be very bulky. They don't conceal real well. And at the end of the day, they're not comfortable to carry. This of course is because they have to be designed oversized to be able to accommodate as many different weapons as possible. The question is though, what use is a holster that isn't comfortable, feels like a brick in your pants, and can't really be concealed really well? This MTA from McKinetech, it sits really nicely on the body. Honestly, it's as comfortable as you can expect from any light bearing holster. Now, if you've ever carried a gun with a light, you know that carrying with a light brings a little extra bulk both with the gun and the holster. In the MTA, the MTA just feels like any other light bearing holster that I own. They didn't add a ton of excessive space uh, to the design of the holster like some other uh, universal style holsters. So when I'm carrying it, it really just feels like a holster that's specifically made for the gun that I'm using except with a weapon mounted light. Honestly, you can't understand how big a deal that is until you've carried something like this, the Filster Floodlight. This holster has been great for use with guns that you know I either couldn't find a holster for or uh, guns that I had to wait a long period of time for a holster to be delivered for. I've had this thing for a couple of years and in those instances, all I have to do is go ahead and mount that TLR1 to the gun that I need a holster for, and then I can go ahead and I can use the Filster Floodlight while I'm waiting for a better option. Now, in all fairness, this is the, what do you want to call it, uh, version one of the Filster Floodlight, and it's not easy to conceal. It's not too terribly comfortable to wear for any extended periods of time. The retention on it is kind of hit and miss. The new version that's out, version two, whatever they're gonna call it, second gen, um, I haven't tested it yet. I have looked at it, I've looked at the dimensions, I've talked to other people who have used it. That holster looks like it may do just a little bit better than this version one, but ultimately it's not gonna be a huge improvement over what this one is. Another big thing about the Filster Floodlight is the price. It's like 140 bucks versus the Mechanitech for 75. And another thing is, is I believe that the Filster Floodlight you can buy in like black, uh, maybe like desert tan, and sometimes they have a white version. You also don't have different options for like sweat guard length. And you know, it's basically like, here's a couple of colors, uh, pay us 150 bucks and you can have this holster. It's a lot different from what you're getting with McKinetech. Seriously, 75 bucks right here. Just make sure when you put in your order that you choose the high sweat guard option. This one here, this is what would be listed as normal for sweat guard length. And you can see that the sweat guard on the rear is essentially the same height as the Kydex on the front of the holster. This one right here, this is a Talon that I have for uh, the Hellcat Pro. This one was ordered with a high sweat guard. So you can see instead of it being level with the front side of the holster, it comes up quite a bit. And that, that's actually my preferred style of sweat guard. I like the high sweat guard because it gives me a nice little barrier between my skin and my weapon. Also, when I'm holstering, I have less of a chance of uh, stuff like, you know, my shirt uh, getting caught in there or, you know, I'm gained a few pounds or whatever. Uh, there's less of a chance of that getting pushed down into the holster and, and pinched uh, by the barrel of my gun. Another thing that I like about the high sweat guards is that the high sweat guard, it kind of acts as a bit of a deflector. Um, when you're holstering, you know, you feel the sweat guard and it basically just deflects it down into the holster. 
Now I'm probably going to order another one of these and I'm going to order it with the high sweat guard because I really think that it's it's worth it to have that high sweat guard. Um, if you order it and you don't like it, it's easy enough to just cut it down shorter and, and you know smooth out the edges if you really want to. But high sweat guard, that's where it's at. Now I wouldn't necessarily say that a universal holster is a 100% replacement for a holster that is actually made for the gun that you're using. But a universal holster does have its place. Some days I really want to go streamline. I don't want the extra bulk. I don't want the extra weight. So I will carry my Hellcat Pro with no light and I'll use this right here, this Talon holster. Some days in situations, I feel like it is more appropriate to use a light. And I preach all the time about how everybody should use a weapon mounted light. There are situations where I don't believe that it's 100% necessary, but that's a whole different topic. A lot of times, whether or not I use my light has a lot to do with the time of year that it is, uh, the weather, um, what I'm doing. You know, if I'm going to work, I'm probably not necessarily going to bring a light because I'm going to be home well before dark. Now, during the winter months, when it is dark a lot earlier, a lot of times I'll go ahead and I'll carry this right here, the Floyd's Custom M&P, and I'll do it with the TLR1. Now, I do have a holster specifically for this setup, but because I now have this guy right here, I can use this and I can use this gun, or if I decide, uh, you know what, I, I, it's, it's a 10 millimeter day, I can grab the 10 millimeter or I can grab the echelon like I did for, you know, the last two and a half weeks or so. Um, just by moving the light over, I can carry this combination. Uh, just as a side note on the topic of the echelon, if you're looking for a holster specifically for that gun, um, McKinetech does have that mold now. So if you want an inside the waistband holster that is just for the echelon and you don't want to use a light, um, they can accommodate that there on the website. Another thing is here in a few months when different companies start making a lot of aftermarket frames for these guns, um, it won't be an issue trying to get a holster for it because I've got the universal holster. Now I know that a lot of people have ran into that with the Icarus P Precision uh, grip modules for the SIGs. There was a little window of time there where people were buying those things and then they just didn't have a holster that would work with those grip modules. When we reach that point with the Echelon, I'm already set and ready to go. All in all, you can't beat the Universal Holsters from McKinetech. It is a great idea to buy one. Whether or not you buy a bunch of different guns or not doesn't matter. There will be many times where having a universal style holster will come in handy and you can break down, you know, a collection of 20 different holsters down into just one and who wouldn't want that? Okay, you guys, that is going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. Head down into the description for more information on McKinetech and I'll see you back here real soon.